Okay, so we're going to take a look at a couple more muscles. Okay, so we're on to the next muscle. So we did the rectus femoris. We're going to look at the vastus medialis and lateralis. Those are the other two quadriceps. So let's take a look at the medialis. Sharon, I'm a little confined by the core. Oh, here. sorry. So oh, let here. me come on over there. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, so the vastus medialis, which is right here. So you can see it attaches right there at the lesser trochanter and comes yes. over here. And of course, ends up here at the at the tibia as well. Great. And that causes pretty bad knee pain on the inside anterior part of the knee. Great. And the it's also the um, uh, nerve root L4, and it's what you call the buckling knee syndrome one. So sometimes when the knee just buckles underneath you. This happens to football players. They'll just make like, a whoop. sudden cut uh, to the left or right, and all of a sudden the knee will buckle. Just buckle. Also, um, it can be holding the patella uh, uh, as well as the... You, you won't be able to mm -hmm, move it to the mm -hmm, side. Mm -hmm. yeah. You won't be able to move it this <laughs> way too good. And uh, the vastus lateralis, we'll be looking at that next. And, uh, and then that's also important uh, in, in the patella moving as well. So here, we do this one next. This one, so we'll treat that when they're laying sideways. And the good thing is the pain patterns mm -hmm. follow their position. The medial mm -hmm. one causes medial knee, and the lateral right. one causes lateral. That's right, it does. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Well, how do you evaluate the range of motion test with these We're guys? Gonna, well, we already did one of the range of motion tests, but we could do a couple of different ones. One of them is the range of motion of the patella. Oh, yeah, the patella, that's right. So we want to see, uh, relax a little bit, relax. Okay, so does the patella come down? Does the patella go inside? Does the patella go outside? Does it move and does it come down? Which is coming, it's coming down but not enough, okay? Uh -huh. And it's going lateral a little bit and medial and lateral a little bit. So it's going to the outside and going to the inside, but it's not coming down enough. Not coming down okay. enough. Okay. Not enough. Let's take a look at the other one. Uh, so the here. book she's using is the Travell and Simons book. Yes. Uh, the famous red book, two volume yes. uh, encyclopedia to myofascial pain. So here's the, the, the volume two, myofascial trigger point uh, it, therapy. Uh, so it's myofascial pain and dysfunction, the trigger point manual. Yep, right. Lord Cervantes, mm -hmm, part mm -hmm, two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. You can, get, you can get those uh, at a good price. Yeah, they're pretty cheap on Amazon. Okay, so let's take a look at this knee. So does it, it it's not relax a little? Okay, so we want to be able to go lateral, which is going a little bit, go medial, it's doing that some, but it's not coming down enough. Okay. So we'd like Both it sides. to come down more. So, so, so we're going to take a look at that. So that's one range of motion test mm -hmm. for the Another one, fastest mm -hmm, group. Mm -hmm. Another range of motion is you can do what, 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 what they're laying on the table and you could, you could do um, a heel to the buttocks test. Uh, supine. Now you see the hip position. is flexed, mm -hmm. so that takes the rectus femoris out of the picture. That's right. So you can you can measure from the ischial tuberosity uh -huh. to the heel, and okay. that's like six six inches. Six inches. Okay. And we'll check side? the other one. Let's check that side. And so you can go ahead and you go from the ischial tuberosity to the heel. Yeah. And then this one here is more like. Um, oh, that's really tight on this. So you can see yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So all right, so let's see. Walking around with that. <laughs> Celebrities. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at the medialis. So for this, we're going to uh, come about here to the lesser trochanter right here and go just like this to the inside of the knee. Just like that, right there. Yep. So let's, I'm going to take a look at that right here. Is there a famous trigger point, or pretty much this is all along it, right? Yeah, well, this when you get closer to the knee. That's the one that causes the knee pain. Ah, okay. This one causes it more, a little higher up. Would you change anything if there was a knee replacement or anything? Or you'd pretty much treat it the same way? It, 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 with, with knee replacement, it, you can do a terrific job on getting increased range of motion, full function. Great. So I would say, I, I do think about the fact that they had a knee replacement and consider that yeah. as part of the treatment. Yeah. And so I will think about that, yeah. but, it, but people with, um, my first job I ever had uh, in 1984, 85 I meant, was working for three orthopedic surgeons and I treated pre and post surgery. Oh, yeah. and, for, and so I got, I got a good, good feeling for how, how the trigger points would fix a lot of times before the surgery and then I'd also have to fix them again after the surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's that feel, Kirk? <clears throat> uh, Pretty the last brutal? One was a bit rough. <laughs> Pretty brutal. <laughs> I heard brutal. some groaning. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's good to breathe. So we're right on the 
the medial side here, the inside, are coming towards it. Remember, so the trigger points about right here would cause you to have the, the medial knee pain. But we want to make sure these muscles get longer because we want the kneecap to, to relax. Go ahead, relax a little bit. Relax a little bit. Was. Oh, there it goes. Well, I can tell because the, the kneecap went down before and then it stopped going down. So I checked that out a bit earlier. So you did it a couple times. Okay, so here it's going side to side. So that's good. And let's go up and down. It's coming, it's moving a little more. Yeah. 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 Now that's moving more. Good. good. That's good. It's coming along. <laughs> okay. So let, let's t take a look at the medial on this on this side, but let's do this one a little bit while we're stretching, like we did on the other, like we did with um, the the last patient. That's good. That's good, <laughs> okay. Kurt. We, we probably won't have to shoot you after all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Okay. Okay, let's, let's, let's go all the way down. So Keep coming. You have to sit way on the edge. Okay. We're gonna give this a real good stretch, huh? Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Well, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, let's have you let's come all the way to the edge of the chair. Okay, and then put your feet on there. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, and then let's see. We'll take you back. Let's have you go ahead and lay back. Okay, what do you think? That's fine. Okay, good. Okay, so let's bend your knees a little bit more. Great. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the fastest case again. So here's our femur, okay? So it, would, it comes about right here to where the lesser trochanter would be. And then we're going to treat the whole muscle all the way down to the, to the, to the tibia. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at it here. So here, now I can feel uh, some taut bands right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Because we put it on the stretch. He agrees. So since we put it on the stretch, you can feel the taut bands better. So that's the one of the advantages. Yeah, yeah. It's not that we enjoy causing pain, but you see, we have to figure out the position where the nerve in, in that tissue is complaining the most. And we need to make sure it's not complaining in shortened position, in neutral position, and in lengthened position. It, it has to not complain in any position to be full function. So. And for him, he'd like to be able to kneel. Yeah, exactly. And to work. Yeah, and that's the other <laughs> measurement is... Uh, <sighs> Daily function. activities, function, yeah. Can we have function? Well, that's right. Now here, this is now getting closer to where it would bother your knee. If you're like me and all you want to do is stay in bed 24-7, <laughs> well then, you don't need, you know, full function for me is, uh, you know, basically I need to breathe and you know, be able to reach for food and drink. <laughs> Order tilt my around. chin up, tilt my chin up to watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like a little more function than that. You really realize how much function you need uh, when you become a parent and then you've got kids that are uh, requiring <laughs> lots of function. <laughs> how old is that little guy? Oh, he's 19 months. 19 months. But he is so easy. He's really easy. But yeah. So here I like to put my elbow into my hip, and then I have my hip pushing. Yeah, you're using your body weight mm -hmm. uh, through your hip, through your elbow, through mm -hmm. your hands and knuckles right onto the chin. Uh -huh. That's it. It's good. And don't. It's good to when you're doing this. Is to is to use everything s as straight as possible. Yes. Absolutely. And so you're going right through all your bones. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is mm -hmm. that not only is it, uh, you know, ergonomically it's better for your joints, but you actually have more control when you have a longer lever arm like that. Your control is better. If you were just pushing with your wrist only, you would have. Then you go less, like this. Yeah, you'd have less control. It, it, yeah. To be able to. And you collapse. Yeah, you'd be mm -hmm. have less control over the minute angles and, and things that you need. Because Sharon might sometimes add a twist when she's in a certain area. She might feel that the uh -huh. fascial plane. Yeah, maybe I'd like to. Frequently, yeah. when I'm treating, I don't go just in. I often am going a little bit this way and then yeah. a little bit that way. Yeah, yeah. And then here, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab it and pull it. Yeah. So I'm usually pin and pulling. Yeah. So this oh, way she's using her body weight for the long axis compression and then she can use her wrist 
to do some twisting or angle, you know. And it, oh wait, so that, that's really another great trick of the body worker, the master body worker, is that they, they use long lever arms and body weight to their advantage. And sometimes it's nice to use this elbow. Yeah. And sometimes it's nice to use the other elbow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How many of you have a favorite elbow? <laughs> favorite elbow. <laughs> <laughs> now one time I was holding Your my... elbow's my favorite elbow. <laughs> So one time I was holding my daughter in one arm, and, and I was carrying a cat in the other arm, <laughs> and I, I slipped on some uh, black ice. And you had to decide which one to say. <laughs> oh, yes, I did! I did! I go, oh, God, you're right. You're right, I had to do that. Her daughter is still alive. That's right! <laughs> we don't so, talk about the cat anymore. <laughs> no, we don't talk about the cat so, the, so I, I had to save my daughter. So I, I, I it was my oh. right, it was my right elbow, and I, so I had to save my daughter. So I, my elbow, I broke it. Oh. So what do you think about a trigger point therapist with a broken elbow? Oh. Mm. I had to hire somebody to be my right arm. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. I hired someone. They were my right arm. <laughs> that, that's not a, a painless fracture. That's a very painful yeah. fracture. But oh. The the remember they t they told me I'd never be able to bend my arm. Yeah, you can see it's still dysfunctional. Yeah, they said you, I would you never really be able to. Can't really do anything to... with that elbow now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I can't do anything with that That's elbow. Apparently not. No, no, no. Okay. Maybe so, you get it replaced. <laughs> I was going to have you lay sideways. Okay, so what side. would be the best way for you, you to go sideways? We had a question about treating the patella. Okay. Sharon would work. She would work all around the sides. So usually I like to put the body support. So why don't you sit up for a second? I'll put the body support up. Okay. So I'd like to have you lay sideways. So I'm going to put the body support system underneath you. So to get more of the vastus lateralis? Yes. Yeah, this is okay, a this so is a great up. position. All of okay, you should great. be doing this. Uh, you should have tried this by now because this is a phenomenal position. Patients love it. It's so comfortable. You get a little cervical roll there, and they don't even want to get off the table. It's so nice. Okay, so in this position, now you can you can actually see how much improvement you're getting while you're doing it. So, so here I can often put I'll put a little bit of a like just I'm putting just a little bit of a pressure on it. Yep. And then at the same time. I could treat, I could treat him. So I'm going to put a little pillow under his knee. Yeah, between the knee, it's, it's good to have a pillow there. Oh, that's where I found that. <laughs> um, you get, maybe give me a big, big pillow on that side. Uh, there's a bigger one. But that's a good start. Do you want to use this guy? Um, no, this is good enough. Okay, so here's our bassus lateralis. And, um, Here's our greater trochanter, and that's going to come down, attach here. Uh, so let's go ahead. Let's take a look at our a picture of it, um, on, because we, it has nice paint patterns. So take a look at here. So here's it's our huge all the way. So it causes pain all the way up to the hip and all the way down, kind of like a like a like a, a curve underneath the kneecap. Like a putter. Mm -hmm. Like right underneath there. And then you can see here it's attaching here a little bit onto the tibia and there's a little bit of a, a little ligament, the lateral collateral ligament we'll look at there. And then you can see it causes pain in different positions all over on the outside of the, of the knee. Okay, so we'll give it a nice treatment. Okay, so find the greater trochanter. Then we're going to come into it. So what do you, oh, that hurts there, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not that bad, though. Please. You're doing so much working. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here. So we're going to give it a little bit of a stretch while we're pressing on it. So our bastus, lateralis. How, how are we doing on time, Justin? Good, good. We've got five minutes to nine, and uh, I think people are probably getting a little, you know, after a long work day. We should, we should probably be pretty quick to the rest, I would think. Okay, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> you got one. Good. Okay, so a lot of times you know you got a really good one is when you press on it, and all of a sudden the knee bends more.
part of the, the vastus is kind of in the back here. So maybe it was, that kind of acts a little bit like a hamstring. So I'm gonna go ahead and treat that a little bit, uh, stretch this way. Yeah, yeah the very back part of the vastus lateralis, yeah, it's good to actually, uh, yeah. it's different than the, than the rest of the muscle. It does act a bit like a hamstring, so it's important to know. Well, and even when you're doing the 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 the, the um, we could do the uh, standing toe touch also for that a uh, test that also could could give the give you a the vastus lateralis. Yeah. Okay, let's see how we're gonna do. All right, let's give it a little stretch. Go ahead and push your, your, your foot towards me and relax. And push it towards me and relax. And push, come see how close it's going. <laughs> so now it's one finger. Okay, one and a half fingers. Mm -hmm, see, mm -hmm. there you go. Push towards me and relax. So it's getting real close. That's really, that's really close. So you did really good. That's super great. <laughs> now we just have to see if you can kneel. Okay, let's, yeah. try, let, let's turn you over on the other side. Get your shoulder on that little crevice under your neck there. Let's go ahead and put this under your knee. Okay, so again, we're going to go ahead and treat it. So here in this position, so you see we got uh, about uh, five, six inches here. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I got my me measuring tape right here. So we're starting out, and we're gonna. So I got a little bit of pressure here. I'm gonna go ahead from the seat to the heel, six inches. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and treat that while we're while we're. So here we're gonna find the greater trochanter, can come just a little bit below it. We're gonna go ahead and press right there. What okay. do you think of that? Yeah. He can feel that. He feels it. How painful is that? Well, you know, pretty good. Okay, good. <laughs> He's Something. talking. He's not gasping, so it it's must not, be it's too, not too bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to this. Okay. Oh, so I get touched there, and all of a sudden, now it's closer. It's only it's a little bit like five fingers. That was a pretty. Mm -hmm. So we're coming down towards the knee, Maybe and more. so I'm just giving a really light pressure, mm -hmm. like almost like just, a, but but I'm noticing. If I press a spot, does it does it come closer? They're asking lateralis. Mm-hmm. Vast. Oh yes. Yes. I'm vasting lateralis. And let's do a little bit while we're while we're stretching it this way. So here, here's our grater. So come to us inferior, and we're gonna put a little bit on the stretch here, and a little bit on the little right here. And as, as it seems like it takes, you could take up this leg as it seems to, to get a little stretched a little bit more. Okay, that's that. Um, so here I'm just looking at this little um, collateral of uh, the lateral ligament here. So I was just going to take a look at that. And you noticed it? Yeah. So it comes over here to the fibula. So right there. Okay, the fibular collateral ligament. There, right there. Okay, let's see how we did. So we, we didn't treat it too long, but let's just go ahead and see. Go ahead and press your your foot towards me. Push, 
and relax and push and relax and push and relax and push good so we have three fingers good okay so we improved a little bit so I'd like to see at least one third improvement or 50 percent or 100 percent and so we, we improved that was good so let's let's go ahead and have you um, lay on your back for a minute and um, I guess I want to take the, the body support out underneath this side. Okay, go ahead and lay on your back. Okay, so oh, with your little bit with your legs, so scoop, 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 scoop up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay, let's see how we did with our, our knee. So let's see how we're doing. So let's see if our kneecap comes down, up, down. That's nice. That's a little better. Oh yeah. That's what you call better. Yes. Yeah, so it kind of moves. Yeah, let's go inside and out. It's moving. <laughs> so that would kind of help us to, to, to be able to, if it can if it can rotate under, then it's gonna feel better when you're kneeling on it. Yeah. 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 Let's see this one. So here we come down. This one's a little tighter. This one needs a little bit more tension. Okay. So you could treat your your down, right down the center, down mm -hmm. the lateral, and the medial. And that will help you with this one. Relax a little bit on this one. Let's go down, side, side. So it seems like this one we want to get a little bit better. Okay, okay so let's let's do a little bit of st strength test. Okay. Also, we can do. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and hold it up there. And let's go ahead. And I'm going to push. Have you push up towards me? Push, push. And then I'm going to add some force. Strong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what you call strong. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Functional. Should we test the strength? Oh, yeah, strength? you can do it if you like. I did one. You can oh, you ready? Well, you do it. You do this one. Okay, so uh, for the... I did this one. Okay, so for the mm -hmm. quadriceps, mm -hmm. um, for the rectus, I'm not... Uh, for the rectus, we did both uh, joints. For the vastus, we... Uh, I'm sorry. That was side. This side. Yep. Like that, okay. <laughs> so you have uh, you have one hand on top of the knee. This hand uh, supports this joint, and uh, so for both of them together, you push straight up into my hand, Kurt. Push straight up, and I add one, two, three. That's plenty good, strong. And to get more of the lateral, that's lateral. So you turn inward. Remember, creating that straight line, and then you push down and in. Push up and out into my hand, and one two three good and then to push down and out like that bring the knee up and i'm gonna push down ready push up in my hand can i one two three okay good so they had good strength okay oh during testing you want to tell the patient not to grit their teeth or hold their breath <laughs> they will do that so just breathe normally while i'm uh, doing your strength test and don't clench your teeth <laughs> okay good 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 all right. I think you wanted to do this one. This oh, uh, no, it's good enough. I that's should. Good enough. Yeah, okay. that's, that's good. All right. We did it. We did yeah, it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so right. let's roll, roll, go, roll to one side and then yeah. go ahead and sit up. We still got a no, number of muscles to get through, so let's, let's oh, get through. Sure. Okay, okay, and then go ahead and stand up. Okay, so let's so what, go ahead and sit down on the legs for a minute. Okay, so um, another area we're going to do is the hamstrings, and, and, the, and we're going to do the... Um, gastronemius and the soleus and the uh, uh, the back of the knee muscles the the uh, the lock and unlock one so we're going to do the lock and the unlock and we're also going to do the um, uh, squat test okay. so if you could go ahead come over here and if you could go ahead and go towards touching your toes this is a good test for the hamstrings so let's go ahead we're going to test and so here we're going to test from the the middle finger so to you the want floor. Locked, right? yeah for this one yeah over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so that's six and a half inches. So that's good. Okay, let's have you come up slowly. Great. Okay, so let's feel you lock and unlock your knees. So let's, oh. can, let, let's see if you can lock them. Let me feel it. Okay, lock. Good. And then let me see this one. Yep, she can lock them. That's good. You can do it. Okay, so step forward. And we're going to have you lock. do... That's for which muscle? The popliteus? Yes, the popliteus. Okay, yes, yes. lock and unlock is for yeah. the popliteus. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next we're going to have you come down and you're going to do a deep knee bend just as far as you can go. And so we're going to measure from your, 
from your uh, issue two velocity to the floor. Okay, there you go. I, if you hold something, no. you go low. Okay. No, I don't want you to. Hold. Oh, you don't want me to hold no. anything? Mm -mm. Okay, so you're going to go just like that. Okay, and so that's like uh, 19 inches. So and what muscle do you think that is? Soleus. That's right, Soleus. they know. Last time I was 17 <laughs> inches, so oh, <laughs> I'm tighter. But that was no, me. 16 yeah. is, be is better. No, oh, it's better if it's yeah. left. Yes, but last time we did that, I was 17 mm -hmm. inches. That's worse. Yes, Okay. but that was a long time ago. Oh, oh, a long time ago, okay, good. Pre-accident. Oh, okay, yes. okay, one inch difference, okay. Yes. All right, so let's take right. a look at, look at, at treating the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look at the, the, the popliteus and also the soleus and gastrocnemius. Okay. okay. And let's do, when, we're going to do another test when you're laying down. Okay. okay. All right, so let's have you go ahead and lay down on your tummy. Okay. So we're kind of working the back muscles, the back of the leg muscles and thighs. So we Doing did the together. standing toe touch for the hamstrings. So we did. So so we're gonna do for the soleus the bent knee. The knee bending because mm -hmm. the soleus. Remember, just like the rectus crosses the hip joint, but the soleus. vastus does not. Mm -hmm. The the quad the, the uh, gastrox cross the knee joint, but the soleus does not. That's correct. So so here we're looking. Do we have at least fifteen degrees of of dorsiflexion? So here is straight. So go ahead, and that's pretty good. But let's see if we can get it a little bit better. So. Um, we could give it a little uh, test uh, also, so we could look at how many degrees. So we could go um, put this right here, put this along where the foot is. So let's go ahead and give it, um, all right, and let's let's go ahead and measure that. So that's about um, 10 degrees. So. Um, so let's see if we can get it to 15 or 20, okay, something great. like that. Okay. And then the other would be the gastrocnemius test. So this would be, and here we're doing a little better with that. You can see we're getting about 20, more than more than 15 degrees there. So the soleus is a little worse than gastrocnemius. Yes. And I'll, let's show you the, 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 uh, the uh, yeah, this is good. So this is the straight leg dorsiflexion. That, cr that stretches two joints, so mm -hmm. that's how you get the gastroc. Okay, let's look at the popliteus. And the popliteus muscle. Yeah, so here is, so this would be the stretch, and that would be the contraction. So it's, it's let me get my finger right on it. So that's the stretch, the contraction, so it doesn't want to do the contraction. I can feel, she notices that. <laughs> so I feel it, can, it stretches, but it doesn't want to contract, yeah. All right. So let's check that popliteus right here. And I'll, let's, show, let's show you a picture of it. Okay, this one doesn't want to contract at all, and so it, it just gives a slight stretch, but no, no, no contraction. Okay. Okay. And so, the heel, the buttocks for the oh no, well shortening for the hamstrings, but we already did that well, for the quads. Well, we can we can yeah. look at here. Yeah. yeah so here's our heel to buttocks. Do you want to see how Six I would figures. do the uh, strength test? Oh yeah, let's do the strength for test for those. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. So you you could just stay in that position. Okay. Great. Okay. So for the hamstrings. Bring the knee not up to 90. There's the muscle fibers overlap too much at that point, and they're locked, and you wouldn't really have a good strong test. So you bring it up just to 30, okay? Hold that right there. And what I do is I would use a straight arm because I don't, this is not a very strong area for the tricep in this position. So say push up into my hand, and then I add one, no, no, push up into my hand. You're pushing down. You see how I'm you're pushing, pushing down? Up. I haven't pushed down yet. Just push straight up. Now I'm gonna add one, two, and there's nothing there. So hamstrings are definitely showing a lot of problem. Okay, so push up into my hand, push up, and one, two, there's nothing there. So neither, neither of those, so both those showing problems, okay? Those are the hamstrings. You could differentiate between medial and lateral by turning out, and that would give us more of the medial hamstring or turning in, ooh, it doesn't turn in, <laughs> and uh, give me more of the lateral hamstring, okay? Uh, so, uh, what was the other one? Oh, popliteus, okay? So knee, 90 degrees, you have them turn in like this, keep that in, now I'm gonna twist out. So you can see how much foot is bending, the foot doesn't even stay straight, so you know the popliteus isn't doing anything. She's using her all sorts of foot muscles to try and substitute, so twist in, it, it can't even hold in, so, and I just twist out. So twist in, 
and I twist that. Oh, just gone, right? Push, mm -hmm. push, push, push. Okay. No popliteus muscle at all. That muscle, same thing Sharon found. So same thing here. So turn in. Ooh, it doesn't really want to turn in. And I'm going to twist out. You don't let me twist out. So it just comes apart. Twist, twist, twist. No. Okay. All right. Got it. The uh, gastroc, uh, different than the hamstring, what you have to do is you have to, uh, sorry, point the toes. That's how you point the toes and relax a little bit. Relax, honey, for just a second. Oh, yeah, okay. down to 30. Now point the toes all the way. Now push up into my hand. Now I add one, two, three. Okay, amazing, right? If you have the foot flat like this with his hamstring, push, push, nothing, okay? But when she tenses this, that foot flexion, that puts the gastroc in the mix. Push one, two, three. Okay, so, so gastroc's she's strong good. With gastroc, gastroc's weak good. With hamstring. Hamstring's a mess. Weak with popliteus. Just mm -hmm. one more time on this side. Point the toe to engage the gastroc. Push up into my hand. And I add one, two, three. Okay, good. So, super. Popliteus. Really need help. Go, really that. need help. <laughs> Hamstrings <laughs> really need help. Uh, the gastrocs are pretty good. Um, soleus is a little bit trickier to test. You you point the toes and then I I actually push down and out. But that's plenty strong and I don't think it's a great test, in my opinion. Push up and then I yeah push up. Yeah, I don't do that test very often, but that's how you test. It'd be hard to find a weak one, pretty much. But all right, good. Okay. So, um, how's your comfort level? Should we put the body support system underneath you? Yes. Okay, so why don't you come up on your hands and knees and we'll do that. So, we're going to hit those three, we're going to hit four muscles. I'm sorry, the strength tests are not on the poster. That is uh, applied kinesiology, uh, and uh, you could look it up. You might be able to find some things online. Well, There's... You wouldn't want to have any more on that poster. No, not any more on that poster. <laughs> the poster is just for range of motion tests. The strength tests uh, are not on any poster that I know of. There's a book by Walther, W-A-L-T-H-E-R, that tells you every single thing you could possibly need to know about applied kinesiology. Um, really amazing book. You could spend your whole life studying it. But uh, they have the strength tests and, and everything uh, that you could need to know. I mean, acupuncture, holographic, er, er, amazing stuff is in there. But uh, we're showing you all the strength tests in this course because you might like to do them. Oh, it's so important because yeah. you, need, it's so, you have to have the length and you need to have the strength. Yeah. So as soon as you have the length, then you want to go for the strength. Basic premise of every strength test mm -hmm. is line up the muscle so it's as straight as can be. The fibers are in a straight line. Then push 90 degrees against that straight line. Have them push into you first to engage the muscle. And then you add five, three to five increments of strength. So one of the things that, that causes significant uh, knee pain is the, the, the lateral, the biceps femoris, the lateral hamstring. Yeah. Um, this one causes some medial, but more buttocks. Yeah, so, so the, the this semi one goes up, medial mm -hmm. side goes up, and mm -hmm. lateral side goes, goes down. down. So the more important one for, for pain in the knee would be the yes. one on the outside. Exactly. And I find that they get a lot of problems at the Golgi tendon organ where they insert right below the knee onto the tibia. Lots and lots of little uh, nerve bundles in there sending signals to shut this off. Remember, where would the Golgi tendon organ be on the other end would be right at the uh, sit bone, right? The ischial tuberosity right there. And then they'd be right there beneath the knee on the tibia is where the other Golgi tendon organ So this is be. where you want to start. So here's our here's our ischial tuberosity. Yep. So let's feel it. And we come just just right below it. And you're going to go right onto where the muscle attaches. Yeah. And let's go a little bit lateral to get the lateral attachment right there. Right on it. I feel we're right on it there. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to come down inferior. And then I'd like to give it a little stretch. So I come over like this and stretch the, the lateral a little bit. Wow. While we're treating it. How's that feel? <laughs> That's, uh, I Wowzy. noticed it quite a bit. <laughs> You're noticing it quite a bit. Great yeah. terminology. So if I have the table down lower, I might use my extended arm yeah. rather than my elbow. Yeah. So coming in looking at the lateral. And we mentioned that uh, correlation finding uh, that George Goodhart had with the uh, vitamin E and uh, problems with a lot of the muscles in the thigh and, and back of the leg. 
Um, it's kind of interesting. Hard to prove clinically, but they did uh, show uh, really interesting matchups between uh, those clinical findings and uh, the blood work. So, you know, if you got someone who just can't get better, maybe they don't have enough vitamin E, and who could well, use a little vitamin E? Well, another thing you could do is you could you could test their blood, blood yeah. and see what they're low in. Yeah, yeah, it's always good. And then we can see whether or not somebody might need some attention there. Yeah. Blood work is not the best at nutritional values because, uh, you know, what's in the blood may not be what's in the tissue. But uh, some tissues concentrate nutrients up to eight times the amount in the blood, you know. So it's hard to tell exactly, but uh, uh, basically a healthy diet helps everyone. And, uh, and a good multivitamin, not like a Centrum, but something from a high quality vitamin source is just a good idea for probably most people. The okay, here we're going to go to its attachment on the on the um, tibia and close to the, where the fibula is here yeah, see it comes right down below the knee there yeah the walther book was uh it's just i think it's just called applied kinesiology and it's by david walther you could probably get that at a good price on amazon also some you some student has it if i wrote all sorts of good notes for you in it <laughs> Push towards me a little, and relax, and push, and relax, and push, and push, and push, good, super. So let's take, I'm going to take a look at the uh, medial hamstring. All right. That's <laughs> the semimembranosis and, and the Yes, the semi and the, and the membranosis and tendinosis. Now the tendinosis will t attach uh, in, in the, on the pes anserinus. Yeah, that's right down there where the three muscles converge to make that little pes anserinus. Is this uh, more or less tender than the uh, lateral? Oh, the lateral was extremely lateral. tender. Lateral is more tender. This one feels good. You could go deeper in there. Okay. <laughs> gotcha, this gotcha. one feels good. Yeah, that, that was okay. the tightest one where okay. I feel the most pain. So. Okay. And again, it's important. The pain is important because that's the threshold of function. If you understand that, then you, then you really you understand trigger point therapy. Pain becomes the, the limiting threshold to function. So uh, when you start to function and you reach pain, then it'll, your body will naturally stop any function beyond that point. Go ahead and press towards me and relax. So if and we can reduce pain, we are increasing the threshold of function. So uh, that upper limit, the more painful chemicals we release, the more painful bands and taut bands we release, the upper limit, the higher the upper limit of function becomes. So here I'm taking a look at the popliteus. So I'm contracting it and stretching it. Contracting it and stretching. Yeah, it just unlocks and locks the knee. It's just like a little little can opener at the end of the joint just does a, at the end of an extension it just causes a little twist blink to lock the knee if it didn't you could get very tired knees people who have bad popliteus they get no break because when you lock your knee you should have a break you should be able to rest on your knee joint but you're standing up for a long time and your knees get really tired your legs and thighs and hamstring get really tired could be your popliteus is lock, not locking the knee for you Okay, so we're coming a little closer to the, the seat here. Yeah. Well, that's nice. We're yeah. coming right along. Mm -hmm. So we're looking now. I'm going to look around for a little, whatever it might be stopping it from from coming close to your seat. And of course, the uh, you know standing toe touch is one way to measure mm -hmm. you know this. But right. there's lots of other things that go into that standing toe touch as well. So. Um, things with the low back. Yes, whatnot, oh, so. many things, yeah. Gastronemius. Yeah, gastrocnemius is one, yeah. So here we go into the gastrocnemius. So we're coming along to the gastroc. <coughs> Teach, treating it on a stretch, of Stephanie, course. Could you pull out the gastronemius? And if you, if you could show us the popliteus, that might be nice too. Okay, popliteus. You say popliteus, tomato. Popliteus, that's what I say. You say tomato, I say tomato. Nobody mm. says tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Pretentious people say tomato. <laughs> And popliteus. Oh. 
Oh, I see. Maybe if I had some cool sunglasses like Kirk, then I'd say Pavlatius. <laughs> 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 Poplities, I should have known. I said another, another one. Oh, right, all right, all right. I guess I'm losing this one. Uh, the way to, the way to, can I show you? A, uh, the way to look at the popliteus is, is, you put your hands like this. That's how it looks. Okay, so it comes, it's attached down here to the tibia, and it wraps up a little higher on the uh, femur, like this. So your hands would be like that. So. Meaning that this would be the, since it's going like that, that would be the right femur, right leg. You see? Okay, it starts on this tibia and goes up onto the fibula and uh, into the tibia right there. Ooh. It just helps twist the knee into a locked position and unlocking it. That's okay. Cool. And the gastrox, the, you know, the impressive biker muscle, those big, lumpy, awesome looking calves, those are the. You know, two bellies of the gastroc, lateral and medial, and they do cross onto the femur, so they are a double joint muscle. Okay, and the uh, underneath, flat like a mattress underneath them is the soleus, and that does not cross. That's just like, like a big flat muscle attaches all along the tibia, all the way down to the calcaneus, causes all kind of heel problems. And here you can see that the trigger points are right behind that knee, a lot of those, and they cause that referred pain. Uh, pretty much where you'd expect them. Referred pain is about where it would be. But, except for this spot right here. You would not expect really bad plantar fasciitis pain to come from a trigger point up here, but it does. So, um, I just was going to review here. So, for the back of the knee, the knee pain, the gastrocnemius would be the most likely. Then the biceps femoris, so, so the gastrocnemius, then the biceps femoris, the lateral the one, the popliteus, the semitendinosus, okay, and membranosus, and then the soleus, and then the plantaris is the least likely. So, <laughs> so coming here and all the way up. Tiny little plantaris muscle. And coming up over here, just like that. Yeah. So um, I just thought we needed one more in there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, we got to stand on our toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a ballerina. A little extra, extra, extra kick there to help the gastrox and soleus. So we could uh, go ahead and come on our ballerina toe Yay. and see if we can feel it. Oh. And come on our ballerina toe. Oh. <laughs> there. Okay, so give that a nice massage. Yeah. This area is going to require a lot of work. You can see how much of a jump and a twitch those nerves think they have the right to scream, yelp, whenever they want. And uh, so, uh, you know, you're going to have to work on them until push they tone down. Push. And relax. When? And push. Good. And now bring your heel towards your seat. And push towards me. And towards you. And towards me. <clears throat> right, hun? You gotta yeah. get all those muscles, and yeah. those little tiny trigger points, uh, those tender spots that are screaming bloody murder. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get them to say, uh, okay, me. I will function. Bring it towards you. We go through the pain to the function that we need. Because pain indicates when there's damage that we need not to move a joint or a muscle because of the damage, but but <laughs> they tend to stay that way long after and complain far too much. Trigger points are like erroneous, uh, you know, message of damage that don't need to be there. So we've got to get rid of those to allow function. Did you treat the popliteus also? I did. Yes? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. All right. Okay, so um, 
So here we took we took a look and we treated uh, all the muscles here on this side. Great. Let's take a look on this side. We should probably move faster. We've oh. got a couple minutes left. All right. We may, oh, we may sorry, have to sorry. let you do that one okay, on your own. You, remember, we, we did that already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we want to retest this muscle could, strength real quick. Do, just, mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's just do that real quick. Let's see if we were able to improve this uh, popliteus. So we should visibly see a difference because she couldn't even move it into position. So turn in. Okay, that's better. And I'm going to twist out, hold. One, two, three. Good. And you see I let go and it snaps. It that means that muscle is good. Let's try with the foot like this. It's hamstring time. Our elbow strike. Push up into my hand. And then I add one, two, three. Good. It was giving a little bit, I would say, but it's a lot stronger than it was. And how about, well, this was already strong because the gas was already strong like this. So uh, good. So some improvement, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So um, we can have you go ahead and uh, if you come on, if you slip off the table. Now, we just did the adductors last time and gracilis and stuff, so we could. What do we have left? Those are the we ones have we have left. Adductors, yeah. Adductors. Yeah. And, well, and we gracilis. could do gracilis, yeah. We yeah. could do gracilis. So All right. Let's take a look at uh, adductors and gracilis. These are the last two muscles, folks, and then you will have completed everything that could cause knee pain. Let's say we go ahead and lay on your side. Oh, on my side. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing this leg. Do you want me to lay um, on this leg? Well, which leg would you like us to do? The same one. The same one. one. Let's get one good. Okay, so. Let's get one leg good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's get one leg working. Well, the worst leg. We're, we're working on the one that's worse. Yeah, work on the worst leg. Okay, so this is the one that, that, that I was going to treat. So then you probably no, don't. I know. Okay. Then you have to do the other oh, leg. Oh, face it. Mm -hmm. So in this sideline position, the leg that she's treating for the uh, medial side of the thigh here, uh, the adductors and gracilis, will be the downside leg. I think that should make sense to everyone. Yep. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the um, uh, brevis, the, the uh, adductor brevis. Well, we didn't do the, the range of motion test. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Should we have you line your back real quick for the range of motion test? Yeah, that we didn't do that. Can okay. I do it on the... Cushion? Yeah, you can do it uh -huh. on those okay. cushions, yeah. yeah. We'll do it on the cushions. Okay, so the, the range of motion test for this one. Yes. So we're going to go ahead. We're doing this one. Okay, this one. <laughs> okay, so we we'll go ahead. So uh, so we're, we're going to go... We're seeing... We're, we're going to measure from the lateral knee to the yeah. table. Or you could put the heel on the inside oh, yes, of the thigh, too. Another, another way to do it is come like this. Yeah. And then you could measure from here to here. So not too bad range of motion wise. Yeah. Okay. Not really bad at all. Okay. Um, so it's it's about um, three, yeah. one, two, three and a half inches here. Not but, too bad. Mm -hmm. And, and the way I, I like to do it from lateral. And so this would be about uh, six inches. Okay. okay. Right. Well, and I I actually would like, rather treat your your adductors this way. And Let's then stay, stay there then. And then also okay. uh, mm -hmm. the uh, oh the, the straight leg one. The straight leg. Yeah. Bring so it. here we're going to take it up and let and it come out. And it should get to 90, so not it's too not, bad, not but it's not to quite 90. to 90. And you want to see the strength test real quick? Oh yeah. That was real easy. <laughs> now all you have to do is you brace this leg down, and then this leg push in toward the other leg, ankle toward the other leg. And then I add one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that strength test was okay. So the range of motion, fairly good. Strength, fairly good. Okay, so here we're gonna see the, the femur. Uh, Stephanie, could you pull out the picture that we're using, each thing we're doing? So it's over there. Okay, so here's our, so we're here, find our femur. We're gonna look at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, Longest and the brevis. So let's go ahead. We're going to find the femur. We're going to come a little bit in and press right in there. And not nearly as painful as some of the other spots? No. no. Okay, so I adductors. Immediately. <laughs> adductors are, are in better shape than some of the other muscles we've looked at. Because they've been worked on the IUP. And, and, and I was going to say, we worked on them in the last class. We so. did. <laughs> yes, we worked yeah. on them before. Not so, too long uh, ago. Yeah, that, that's a uh, longest and brevis. 
add a curve on the surface. Referred pain is nothing too special with the adductors except that the magnus causes upward referral into the pelvis. Otherwise, they're pretty local. Is that them? Yeah, put it over here. Put it right here. There it is. Adductor longus and brevis. So here it is. So it's actually onto the femur and then on to the pubis. Yep. Onto the pubic ramus there. So here we're going to come. So we just did right here by the, the, the femur first. Then we're going to come close to, to the pelvis there. And actually the referred pain is actually, you can see why it comes right down. It's a little different than I was saying. It's actually oh. quite different. Uh, you can see the adductor longus and brevis comes right near a ball right around the knee. Kind of well, like you were the talking about morris. the magnus. I was talking about the magnus, yeah. Okay. And then up here, uh, all the way up by the hip there. So, yeah. Now let's take a look at magnus. Is magnus uh, right around here? It's not too far. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. Mm -hmm. There it is. Here's the magnus. Now you can see the magnus, that's where the muscle is. And then see how it goes and, up into the pelvis. Yeah, and the referred pain is pretty much right where the muscle is, but then there's this referral up into the pelvic cavity, right in where the organs are. So oh. a lot of mistaken uh, organ oh. problems uh, due to those trigger points. I'm just going to treat it a little bit while I'm moving it so I can see what it's doing. So here. So that's shortening and that's oh. extending. Shortening and lengthening, shortening. So I can feel the parts that aren't working. So I can feel right there, it's not working. So I'm just going to hold it there and just move it just a little bit. And again, by not working, you mean. Oh, that it's, it's going into like Charlie horse or a muscle contraction. Yeah. Uh, uh, involuntarily. Yeah. I mean, it's, just because. It's not you put smoothly it, moving through its yeah, range of motion. Yeah. So if you put it into um, the shortening passively shortened position and yeah. it goes into contraction right you know that it, it's that's one of its dysfunctions yeah yeah so then what's showing is that when you're trying it's, it's not does it not, not really under your control yes it's an indication Ooh. it's got a nerve circuit in there that's causing that you know you want to be in full control of those muscles okay next we're going to take a look at your gracilis yep so if I can have you turn sideways and face towards Kirk. Do we have a range of motion for gracilis? Not well, really, right? It's kind of like really. the adductor. Yeah. There is a strength test. You want to line your back? I'll show you the oh, strength test real good. quick. Okay. All right. The strength test for the gracilis is a fun one, actually. Okay. Since it's in here, it brings the leg kind of down and in. So you twist the ankle so that it's turned in. and. I brace this here, and I'm pushing up and out at a 20 to 30 degree angle. So you push into my hand, and I push up and out. One, two, three. Pretend it's weak. It would look like this. Push, and then it would go <laughs> up like that. Okay? It would go push in, and then it would one, two, break. But strong, like she has it. Turn in and push in, and then go one, two, three. Okay, so it's in at a 20 to 30 degree angle down into the table. That's chrysalis. And the, the t this test that we already did for, for the adductor is good for the gracilis. Yeah, the adductor and gracilis, the yeah. adductors and gracilis tests are similar. Okay. Last muscle, folks. So here, so here, here is a tip. So it's the one that sort of sticks out right here, oh. right there, <laughs> yeah. and then so that's where it attaches on the pelvis, and then down to the pes anserinus. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead on the tib medial tibia. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's a great review. There is never actually. A class that Sharon has taught that I have thought all the way through. Oh, I already knew this. I always find, uh, oh, that's a great review, or ooh, that's really cool. Yeah. She adds a little spice to every class to, to to do things that you know you can only get that kind of knowledge from thirty years experience. So. And we've had some people enjoying the addition of the uh, muscle testing in there. That's cool. That's good. There's rarely a class that has that too. <laughs> I, I'm not, I not bragging, but I, I don't think anybody quite teaches it as well as I do, actually. I've taught it in several different states, and uh, I even did a research project on it at Vanderbilt, exactly how to do it and what was scientifically valid about it and what wasn't. And the important thing is to get that conscious engagement. Always and always, the patient has to push first. Otherwise, your results are pretty much useless.
Okay, so we're right on that gracilis here. So we're going to get right up at the attachment. On the, right on that gracilis right there. And remember the trigger point spread. So when you get a primary trigger point, its referred pain area will activate trigger points in those referred pain areas. So uh, a, a key trigger point will refer to, to other areas and activate other trigger points. Sometimes that's called satellite trigger points. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. And how about a hand for all of our devoted, uh, what do you call these? Uh, Viewers? No, you guys, oh. uh, you come in and you're, uh, I want to call them dummies. They're not dummies. Oh, they're no, the, they're, they're, they're people what, watching. You no, know, oh, all the are, you guys um, come in every week and help us uh, with the, what are they called? Our models. People? Models, <laughs> models, that's what they're called. <laughs> models. The models coming every week. Thank you, everybody, for all the help. And, and other people and, who aren't too far away, or even if you're far away, you could come and be in the class too. Yeah, definitely. And, and we can test you and, and uh, evaluate you. You can do the range of motion tests and and, uh, and, the, and dance with us. Yeah, if, yeah. You got, if you've got the time and you want to come up to Chicago yeah. on a Tuesday night, absolutely. Yeah, we'd like to have you. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a, an awesome reality TV show coming up very soon. Oh, yeah. We are starting a show called Women Woman versus, versus Pain. Pain. Yeah, we have we have a truck, uh, a van, a really nice uh, Euro van, like there's a Mercedes Sprinter, uh, set up with a treatment facility inside the van, and uh, we're going to go around the city of Chicago and in other places where we're invited to uh, show people victims, <laughs> yeah, show people that uh, <laughs> model victims, uh, to show people how to uh, overcome their own pain, and we're going to be televising it. Uh, and making it uh, kind of really entertaining, so it can be, you know, who is, you know, who's stronger, Payne or Sharon? And we'll uh, we'll see if we. <laughs> she's gonna take the challenge. People who think that their pain can't be beaten, well, Sharon's gonna take them to task. So uh, that show, uh, it's necessary because uh, entertainment is how uh, awareness spreads, and we need more awareness of this work. That's right. We gotta make it a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're gonna do it through Periscope so everyone can watch it. Okay, so let's take. And we'll see if it gets picked up from there. We're gonna mention a couple of things. So go ahead and lay in your back again. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So we're just gonna take a look at your your range of motion oh, right. test. Okay. Well, we got the van. Mm -hmm. The signs being printed. So uh, maybe by the end of this year, or maybe in the very start of next. Maybe next month if it goes really fast. Who knows? Okay, go ahead and press your knee up towards the ceiling. And relax. Yeah, yeah, we'll email you for sure. And relax and press it up. And relax and press it up. And relax and up. And relax and press it up. And relax and up. And relax and up. Good. See, it can so, be done. So here's our here's our test here. Yeah. As you can see, we're totally doing down pretty down. good there. There's no measurement there. It's on the table. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to measure from. From the um, from the lateral kneecap. Lateral kneecap. Okay, so there we go. And then here we went from also did it like this, and we we'll go from the lateral kneecap to about there. So that's uh, three and a, three and a half inches, so, and we were about six inches or so six, before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was good. So we got some improvement there too. Yeah. Then here we went up this way. That's yep. nice. That's a little better. That's a little better. Should go right and, up to 90. Yep. Okay, see so how we do this way. And then way. should come down to 90. Not quite at 90 here. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all right. So let's take a look at the gracilis here. So I'd like to see if I can get people to pass the range of motion test. Yeah, Sharon makes that a goal. She treats them in the position of testing until the function is uh, reaches its. Well, this one isn't probably going to do it. Yeah, it's not, not going to be <laughs> it, 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 yeah. it, it did lower, though. It did lower. It did lower. Okay, push up just a hair. I can't. Oh, no, that's too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't do that. Okay, so next, at the end, then I'd like to do this at the end. I'd like to see if I can get the whole kneecap to, to be like a well-oiled machine. So I'd like to go ahead and feel it in all different positions and, and, then, and see if I can get it to be as flexible as possible. So I go ahead and move it around while while I'm treating it.
So the, I think we forgot to treat one muscle, Justin. What did we forget? Sartorius. Well, <laughs> you can watch the last class. <laughs> Sartorius is oh. very similar. So we did that a couple weeks ago. Yeah. We did do it a couple yeah. weeks ago. Remember, it's going to come from the uh, and anterior superior iliac spine. And it's going to wrap around to the knee there. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. push, push your ankle in and relax. And push it in. Good. So we, so we, I just was thinking about that. Sorry. Yeah. Very similar. Very similar to Grisilla. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to attach on the same spot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, you're bending really good. Okay. So so the knees doing really well. So we could do a couple of our strength tests and see how good we're doing. Oh, we did those already. Actually, she passed both. Yes. Yeah, I passed. Oh, we did them all. Yeah. yeah. Did all right. Yeah. I'm passing. Well. <laughs> good. All right. So. Um, usually I finish it up with moving around just like I was showing. All right. Okay, so it looks like we did the amazing knee pain relief program. We did. We did the whole yes. thing. Including the sartorius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for sartorius, I might treat it again a little bit on the stretch. So I might actually put it in the stretch position like this. Yeah. The sartorius come in here, makes a lap. And we're going to go from the, the superior iliac spine, come like this and treat it right like this all the way over to here. Yeah. Just like that. So that's how you stretch oh. it. How would you shorten it? This way. Yep, makes so a lap. Do, That's yeah. what it makes a lap like that. Oh, yes. Okay? Yeah, so then I often treat it like this too. And so then how would you test it, do you guys think? You would put it in its, this is, the fibers are straight now. This this is the sartorius right here. It is in a straight line right now in this position. Normally when the leg's straight, it's twisted. But here it's in a straight line. So it's treating it, boom, just like that. And so oh, that's yeah. just how we test it too. That's a great spot. Yeah, the yeah. Pesant is going to be a good spot for a lot of people with knee problems. Okay. And uh, here's how we would test it. We'd put it right back in that position. So make sure the fibers are straight. So here they are straight, just like that. And I'd have you hold it in this position. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pull the whole thing down like this. Push that way into my hands. And I'm going to add one, two, three, four. Okay. And I'd say it's pretty good. Pretty good. It wasn't too okay. bad. Very good. Yay. 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 Okay. Let's roll off and let's have you stand up. Great. Super. Look at that girl go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So tell us how you're feeling. She's going to do a nice test. So that's good. So you now you're coming Lower. much closer. That's only great. about two inches from the floor. So we went from about six to sure. two. Great. 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 Want to see how you're doing with, the, with the, her, um, her uh, squat test? Squat test. <laughs> okay, here we go. And she thought it couldn't get better. <laughs> there we go. It's 15 there. Okay. So that's good. All right. So, um, how's the knees feeling? A little better. Yeah. Good, good. Sure. So, you were saying you had pain on the inside of the knee? Mm hmm. How's that feel? Uh, that still hurts, but the rest feels a little better. Okay, the back is feeling a little better. That How feels about better. How's the front the feel? The quad feels a little better. Good. Um, below the knee is a little better. Okay, it's great. It's just still right here. But okay, also a little bit more needs to be done there. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, I All think, right. you know, what was the, the one there was that gracilis. So gracilis. why don't you go ahead and continue to treat the gracilis on, on your own? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you, Kirk, Kirk let's, let's see what you think. Uh, do you think that you can do the kneeling a little bit better? I think so, yeah. Okay, let's give it a try. Yeah. Okay, and you can see if you can sit back just a little better. Yeah. Okay. So working? Can you imagine working, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> okay good. All right. Good, <laughs> good. we get a few things. <laughs>